Okay, so here's a fairly clever application of, of using this sort of algebra of vector valued functions. We want to come up with equations to describe the cycloid. Now, this is often a topic that you see in the chapter on parametric functions and plane curves. Um, and I believe it is discussed there, if I'm remembering correctly. And deriving the equations of the cycloid typically involves fairly involved, you know, geometric arguments. Um, there's a fair amount of trigonometry and drawing pictures involved. And, you know, it's, it's fairly labor intensive. But with vector valued functions, we can actually, we can do this kind of efficiently. So here's our circle. Uh, I'm going to plot the center. Now the, uh, the radius of the circle is 1. And the circle's rolling this way. All right, so that's a counterclockwise motion. So that's opposite to the motion we usually have our circles turning. Right? Or we, normally we go around the circle like that. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to think of the motion of that point as a combination of two things. One is the circle turning, right? Because the circle is going to turn as it goes. Um, and then the other being the fact that the circle also moves as it goes along. Um, and both of those can be described in terms of vector valued functions. And combining them is simply a matter of adding the two vector valued functions together, right? Um, so the first thing we might do is say, OK, so the kind of the P of T describing the point on the circle, and this is kind of for the, the, the turning aspect of the, the rolling circle. Uh, well, for, we know that for clockwise motion, for counterclockwise, we always do cos T um, sine T. For counterclockwise, reverse the direction, which basically involves just reversing the sine on T, replace T with minus T. But remember that cosine is an even function. Sine is an odd function, so the minus sign disappears here and comes out front there. Um, and so now we have those, uh, that vector valued function describing the circle. If the circle were just going to stand still and, and, and turn, we would have that. But the circle is also going to move, right? And so what we also are going to have, and you know, imagine, I don't know, the origin is, I don't know, say over here somewhere, right? Um, you're going to have the vector value function, let's call it C of t, which describes the center of the circle, OK? Um, now, the y component will always be 1. It's a circle of radius 1, right? So that distance will remain constant at 1. Um, and, and the circle's kind of rolling along at constant speed. So this is going to be a linear change in t as it rolls along, right? So t is going to increase, or sorry, the, the x component is going to increase with t. Um, and, and so the only thing to figure out is what multiple of t do we want to put in here, right? Um, and, and one of the ways to think about that is, well, once you know, the, we begin here, this sort of circle, the point on the cycloid, cycloid begins there. And as the circle rolls, it completes one full revolution and ends up here. Um, right, and so how far have you gone when you get to this point? Well, this point is 2 pi 0, right? Because if the circle rolls once all the way around, then you have traveled the circumference of the circle. The circle has radius 1, so you've traveled 2 pi. And you've traveled 2 pi in a time of 2 pi, because that's how long it takes you to you know, get back to the starting point when you're going around a circle. Right? And so that t value, it's simply 1. Or sorry, the, the multiple is 1, right? So it's just 1 times t, so it's just t and 1. Okay, and that's it. Now, um, that might change if, well, there's a couple of things that could change. One is we could change how fast the circle is rolling, which would involve maybe putting some, some common scale factor in there, like doing 2t instead of t, it would speed up how fast the circle is going, right? 
um, then we would get to this point 2 pi 0, but we get there in a time of just pi, and then we need to multiply by 2. Um, and, and the other thing that could happen is we could change the radius, right? If the radius was, let's say the radius was um, 2 or 4, if the radius was 4, um, then we'd get to 8 pi here, and again, you'd have to rescale, right? Um, so we, we've sort of chosen the simplest possible scenario, which corresponds to the, sort of the standard cycloid, um, but does the job. And we know how to account for those sort of variations if they were to come up. Right? So then the, the vector valued function that describes the cycloid, it's just the combination of those two motions. Um, the rotation and the translation gives you the rolling. So it's just P of T plus C of T. Okay? And so that's going to be um, T plus cosine t, and then 1 minus sine t. Um, and if you go back and check, um, that is going to match the equations for the cycloid that you saw earlier on using what, at least what I think, is, was a more difficult argument at the time.